Well, good morning. Welcome to Riding Shotgun. It is Thursday, June 7th, and it's going to be a hot one. 90 or so today. It's gotten really dry. Went from all that perfect growing weather to now the corn leaves are curled and my grass is starting to get brown. And uh, Anyhow, um, we're out here uh, riding today. Alfie's running ahead and uh, uh, this is the first retirement edition of Riding Shotgun. I haven't figured out what retirement is yet. I'm going to learn soon, though. Uh, but uh, yesterday, I, um, they had an uh, invitation-only um, uh, Josh Whitman State of the State address yesterday, sort of a media roundtable, and, um, and I wanted to go over to that, and I've been probably too invested in all that Josh has tried to do here to not hear these things. I think it's really great that he does them uh, this time of year and um, is really open and talks about, you know, anything and everything and gives you a lot of information and answers questions and and uh, uh, was very, very, very good. And, um, you know, Josh, as always, Josh is a smart guy. He's an interesting guy. He's a knowledgeable guy. His enthusiasm for the university and for Illini sports is palpable and um, it's just uh, you can see why and some of this came out yesterday um, Josh is a really good fundraiser you know he's got a fundraising department he's got an eye fund Howard Milton heads that he's just hired Fred Wakefield to be their West Coast guy a really smart move I'll maybe talk about that a little bit more in a second here but um, at a time when Illinois football is pretty stagnant and when Illinois men's basketball is not doing um, what people would like for it to do um, to be raising funds and money the way they are to me is a testament to Josh that he's gotten out there traveled coast to coast meeting with people since the day he was hired um, lining up um, uh, relationships building trust sharing his vision People know he's an Illini guy. People people know Josh's history. Uh, this was one of the things that the committee to hire an athletic director really prioritized was finding somebody that can win these kinds of relationships, and and um, and that's what's happened. And that's why you see now the steel going up on the seventy-nine million dollar football performance center. Why yesterday we learned about an unexpected uh, bit of expansion to the indoor practice facility, which will make it wider and allow them to do some more things in there. It is pretty cramped. Um, and um, news about plans to um, expand player development in baseball and softball with indoor, um, I guess they would call them maybe performance centers, but an opportunity to practice off-season indoors. Um, and um, and um, we know that the Demersion Park uh, soccer and men's track and field complex is, um, you know, about to really get rolling here. Um, and um, I've told you before that I expect there to be an announcement about um, a project that will expand and improve the Oven Basketball Complex. And Josh hinted at that yesterday when we asked him about it, and he said, well, we have some announcements coming up uh, fairly soon. I don't want to spoil those. And so um, that's something I think we'll be hearing about. And, um, and then this, the hockey matter. And uh, I'm, I call it the hockey project, the hockey situation, whatever. It's really become more than that. It's become the hockey, volleyball, wrestling, and gymnastics project because within the hockey project exists a way to help alleviate the problems that are growing for those other three sports because Huff Hall is outdated and really unfixable for what they want to do. And it's about to get worse because parking over there with another university building, a design center, I believe it is going up, uh, parking over there is going to diminish and parking over there is already uh, cramped and very difficult. And um, so um, I, think, I think Josh has gone from... I think initially when people started talking about hockey, he was like, wow, you know, I know hockey's expensive. We don't have a, we don't have an arena. We don't have a, a facility. Now you got to build a facility and we, you know, we've got bigger fish to fry with football and basketball and other things going on. But then came this NHL um, deal where they, um, 
the league, along with the Players Association, identified five universities uh, that they were willing to help fund feasibility studies uh, for. And uh, Illinois was number one on the list, and they were number one on the list because there's not a Division One hockey program in the state of Illinois, and that's that's crazy. There's 85. Division I hockey players from the state of Illinois. All of them have had to leave the state to play because they don't have an in-state option. Illinois is, I believe he said, uh, sixth in the country in terms of youth hockey development. Um, you know, Ill obviously Illinois has the Blackhawks, which have won three Stanley Cups since 2010. Um, and the University of Illinois is in the Big Ten. The Big Ten is a hockey college hockey powerhouse. Three of the Frozen Four finalists were from the Big Ten. Big Ten attendance averages 4,500 to 5,000 a game. Um, you know, there's a lot of things going on there that point to it, um, point to uh, this being a void that really badly needs to be filled. And, um, and so Josh has really gotten excited about it. And, and he's working with different groups. This facility would be located in downtown Champaign, uh, um, right next to hotels and restaurants and bars and retail. Um, they envision a destination complex where people could come and really take advantage of this. They go to a hockey game, college hockey played on Fridays and Saturdays, go to a hockey game um, at home, and then hit the restaurants, hit the bars. Um, if it was a situation where you were going to stay overnight, there's lodging right there. Um, and then they believe they can work the scheduling out to accommodate the other sports. And uh, this would be a three-rink complex, a competition arena with that seating of about 5,000-ish, give or take, a, a, a public or community arena, um, and then a, another arena which would be called a practice arena, but could also have some community usage as well. And as Josh points out, the DIA would run this facility, but they only are going to program it for 25 weeks of the year. And so what do you do the rest of the time? The building can't sit empty the rest of the time and they believe that they can help fill this building with youth sports with these multi-team volleyball tournaments where you have multiple courts that set up inside this competition arena where you can put down multiple wrestling mats and youth wrestling tournaments will come and so forth um, you know I, I think they see a lot of potential uses there maybe the state wrestling shifts over there that didn't get asked, and shame on me for not asking it. Um, but, you know, when these tournaments come, when you bid on these youth tournaments, I know how it is with softball because we've done it in Decatur for a lot of years. Um, if you can show, um, you know, what's really attractive about this facility for families, and if you can say, well, look, you could come to downtown Champaign, park your car at your hotel, check in, walk a half a block, a block, two blocks to the arena, have this volleyball tournament going on, restaurants all around. You know, it sounded to me a little bit like the way they pitch Indianapolis as a uh, as a uh, an athletic site for events. And you all who've been to the Big Ten tournament know that Indiana's uh, biggest Indianapolis, excuse me, Indianapolis's biggest biggest calling card is their proximity downtown. How fans can move from St. Elmo's to Ocean Air to you know, the Ram to just all the different spots and, and not have to worry about cabs and cars and things like that. And so, um, you know, Josh's enthusiasm for this project has gone way, way up. And he said, we've gotten some seven figure gifts in the last several weeks. They need more, but the different groups. And when you think about it, this is a project that the community is interested in that downtown is interested in, that developers are interested in, that corporate partners are interested in, that regular University of Illinois athletic donors are interested in, that there's multiple groups who have a stake in this thing, and over the course of time, meeting multiple times, I think um, the message I got from Josh is that trust is building, enthusiasm is building, you've got hockey people in the Chicago area who, who are really warming to this thing, and I believe, this is just my guess, uh, but I believe by the end of this calendar year, we'll have an announcement. He's got to get to between fifty dollars and $60,000 as a financial threshold in order to make an announcement that we're greenlighting this thing. But um, I just think it's a matter of, of when, not if. And, um, and, and I know some people I, I take the attitude of, well, why would you do this when, when football needs attention, basketball needs attention? Football's getting attention. 
football, drive over there and look at that facility that's going up. That's going to be amazing. Um, the attention football needs is not just things you can throw money at. It's it's patching up these recruiting de deficiencies that existed when when they came in, and and trying to do that, and and getting a higher quality of kid on campus, and and in this off season revamping the coaching staff, and uh, the basketball is the same thing. Recruiting uphill, getting a better kid in here. How about the week Io had out at uh, Colorado Springs? 32 terrific players. Only 12 are going to be picked for the team. You've got to do something to make yourself stand out. He does it by playing crazy, relentless defense. Uh, Bill Self noticed. Danny Manning noticed. That staff said, yeah, that's one of our 12 guys. And so he'll be on the team. And, um, you know, I just think that's, that's a wonderful opportunity. I understand Brad's going to go up to Canada and watch him play in person on Monday. Um, I know he has texted him and congratulated him and really uh, applauded the opportunity that this is and this is a great opportunity you know this is the kind of a thing that when it happens to a kid his confidence ought to soar he ought to really uh, feel good about himself and and uh, excited about what lies ahead once he reports to campus um, as soon as this tournament is over and I believe it ends on the 16th which is a week from Saturday I think that's right so um, a lot going on there obviously Obviously, more football wins, more men's basketball wins. That's the thing that will get people fired up. I, I get it. Josh gets it. As he said, we've got so much potential, and we can't realize our potential unless football and basketball are strong. So there's no lack of attention to those sports. But um, he's not the kind of guy that's going to sit around and tell Dan Hartley from baseball, well, we can't do anything to help you until we get football figured out. His job, as he said yesterday, is to is to constantly be making 21 sports better. And that's his attitude. And it may be that he adds two sports, that he adds hockey. And because there's 18 scholarships in hockey, you'll have to add 18 women's scholarships to satisfy Title IX requirements, that they add women's hockey or that they add lacrosse. Um, Women's hockey is a more expensive program, but they would already have a venue. Uh, lacrosse would in, would require coming up with some place to play. Um, I don't know enough about lacrosse to know if that can happen on a, on a soccer venue or what. But um, um, anyhow, so a lot going on. Um, I wish every fan, every Illini fan, could have an opportunity to sit in on that session with Josh and listen to him. I think his, his leadership is so impressive that you'd walk out of there saying what you wanted to say for so many years and couldn't. And that's that the program's in good hands. And um, we're going to have to trust some of his decisions. I, 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 think that's, um, I think that's a reasonable thing to do. And, um, and yes, um, more wins in football, more wins in basketball, continued progress on those fronts are essential. There's no doubt about that. So, uh, interesting day yesterday, interesting week across the board. Hope you're all having a great week. Um, it sure feels like summer here in central Illinois. Man, oh man, the ground is dry. We need rain. I'm going fishing for a week, so no uh, riding shotgun next week. Uh, maybe I'll film one out on the boat trying to catch walleye, and we'll, we'll, we'll include it the following week. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, but I am writing uh, one column a week for the Herald Review, and I will write something on this hockey situation uh, on Sunday. And I hope you'll uh, check that out at herald-review.com. I'll make sure to post a link uh, through Twitter there. And uh, have a great week, everybody. Appreciate it a lot. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.